Hello guys, welcome back to another Genshin video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a Mona guide. Mona is an extremely good Hydra support that can boost your team's overall damage by so much, it can put out so much burst damage just by herself as well. So in this video, I'm going to go over her best artifacts, weapons, teams, and go over all of her talents. So yeah, let's get straight into this video. So the first thing we're actually going to go over in this video is her talent. So let's take a quick look at them. For today's video, I'm going to go over support Mona, so I'm not really going to talk about the normal attacks too often, but it's just basically a classic 4 hit combo. Now, her elemental skill is Mirror Reflection of Doom. Basically, it just spawns in a taunt that draws in nearby enemies and periodically deals hydro damage to nearby opponents. And when the duration expires, it would do AoE hydro damage in a certain radius as well. And when you actually hold this skill, it will actually move yourself backwards and then place a phantasm. So this ability is really good for just keeping enemies away from you and generating energy for your Mona. But the sad thing about this ability is, unlike Ganyu's taunt, you only get the particles at the end of the duration. Ganyu spawns the elemental orb particles as soon as you press it, but this one you do have to wait, so that's one downside to this ability. And Mona actually has a special sprint if you already didn't know. Basically when you run, it turns Mona into a puddle and it can move way faster. But it can be kind of clunky to some people. To me I find it fine, but the dodges on this could be kind of weird for you. And when you do this, this will also apply the wet status to nearby opponents. It takes 10 stamina to activate this and will take 15 stamina per second while you're in this special sprint. Now her elemental burst, which is the crazy thing about it. When you pop an elemental burst, it will apply the illusionary bubble to nearby opponents in a large AoE. And while opponents are inside this bubble, it will give them the wet status effect, and it will actually make weaker enemies be floated up into the air. You can tell when someone has the illusionary bubble on them when they have a little constellation on top of the enemy. When the opponents affected by this take damage, the bubble will pop, and will apply an omen to the opponent, which will increase the damage the opponent takes, and also increases the damage or attack that causes the explosion. And the explosion will actually be dealing hydro damage. And down here is the omen, where during the light time it increases damage taken by opponents. Now this ability can be kinda wacky for some people and it is a little confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's really quite simple. So if you take a look at the scaling, we can see illusionary bubble duration, which is 8 seconds. So that little constellation they have on top of the enemy will last for 8 seconds before it pops on its own. And then we can see the legendary bubble explosion damage, which has a huge scaling. That's the actual big hydro number that you get when you pop the bubble. So when you see a giant hydro number, when you see people using Mona in compositions or for character showcases, that is the legendary bubble explosion damage. And then, after the bubble explodes, they'll get the omen, which will last for 5 seconds. And during that 5 second duration, they'll take extra damage. For a level 8 skill, that'll actually be 56% extra damage that the opponent takes. This ability has a cooldown of 15 seconds, and an energy cost of 60, so not too expensive, not too low either. This ability is really good, I hope I explained it in a good way for you guys to understand. And it will also be showcased on the screen of how that ability works because this is a really great part of Mona's kit. So yeah, I definitely recommend leveling up your elemental burst and then your elemental skill, because your elemental burst does a lot of the damage that your Mona will do, and the elemental skill does a little bit of damage, it's not all that crazy amount, but if you want to keep leveling it up, you can. Now her first passive is after she uses the alternate sprint for 2 seconds, if there are any nearby opponents, Mona will automatically place down a phantom, and this phantom will actually last for 2 seconds and explosion damage is equal to 50% of the original elemental skill. So this one's pretty nice to taunt some more enemies around. Sadly this doesn't actually give you any energy particles when it explodes though. So that's a little bit of a downside but it's still a pretty good passive of all. Now this passive is way better than the first one though. This increases Mona's hydro damage bonus by 20% of her energy recharge. So building energy recharge on your Mona is not a bad idea, and you honestly want energy recharge as well because Mona does have a little bit of problems generating energy for herself. But this passive is amazing, and I'll be talking about it even more during the artifact session of this video. And then our last passive is when crafting weapon ascension materials, she has a 25% chance to refund a portion of the crafting materials used. So if you're making a lot of those, hopefully you get some back. And there you go, that's basically all for Mona's talents. I hope I did explain the burst good enough for you guys to understand, because it is a little complicated. 
Especially for new players who just got Mona, because I know I surely didn't understand what she was about. But yeah, that's all for the talent section of this video. Next, we're going to be talking about Mona's constellations. I'm going to be doing a quick overview of all of them, because there's not really too much craziness going on, but there are some pretty good constellations overall. Her first constellation is when you hit an enemy affected by an omen, the effects of hydro-related elemental reactions are increased for 8 seconds. So after you hit someone with the omen, all your electro charge, vaporize, hydro swirls, and frozen reactions will be buffed thanks to this constellation. So this constellation is really good for extra damage, especially if you're running frozen teams because the frozen duration is actually extended. So this one's actually a really good constellation and I luckily actually got this. Constellation 2 is more for the main DPS mana, is when you hit a normal attack there's a 20% chance it will automatically be followed up by a charge attack. So if you want a main DPS mana, this is actually pretty good. Constellation 3 increases the level of the elemental burst, so this one's actually really good for your mana because that elemental burst is insane. Constellation 4 is when any party member attacks an opponent affected by an omen, their crit rate is increased by 15%. So this is just an overall crit rate increase for your team. Pretty good, but of course not needed. Constellation 5 increases the level of elemental skill. And Constellation 6 is when Mona does an alternate sprint, Mona gains 60% increased damage to her next charge attack per second of movement. A maximum damage bonus of 180% can be achieved in this manner. So the longer you end your sprint, the more damage your charge attack will get. This Constellation honestly kinda sucks, because you mainly don't want to be just running around in an alternate split for a long time and this is for a support mona video but if you're doing a main dps mona this also really isn't that good of a constellation because you want to be on the field doing as much normal and charge attacks as you can instead of just running around so yeah those are all for mona's constellations there are some good support ones and some good main dps ones and once again these constellations are not needed so if you don't have any of these you do not have to stress out so yeah that's all now let's go over Mona's weapons. There's a lot of great weapons Mona can use that can be really helpful for her depending on how you want to play it. I'm gonna just get this out the way and say that Skyward Atlas is the best 5 star catalyst to use on your Mona. All the other ones require you to be on the field doing damage. And for a support Mona, you don't really want that. But the Skyward Atlases can proc even off the field after you do damage by like her R2 or a burst. So that's why Skyward Atlas is the best 5 star catalyst for her as of making this video. Now let's talk about the 4 stars because there's a lot of different 4 stars you can actually use. The most popular 4 star people use is the Wid Sith because it's high crit damage substat and it's passive is honestly no matter what you get it's going to be good for Mona, especially if you won a pyro team with her, because that elemental mastery increase is going to be insane. This weapon really helps out your ratios, and you can get extra attack increase, you can get elemental damage bonuses, and elemental mastery, so that is why this is actually the most used and best 4 star catalyst for Mona. Another great weapon is the Favonius Codex, because like the, all the other Favonius weapons, it has an energy recharge substat, which is good for your Mona, because it will help her get her burst more often, and it also passively gives her more hydro damage bonus because of her passive. So this is also one of the most used weapons for Mona, because it's just super good and super reliable, and when you get a crit hit, it will give her even more particles. But if you don't have any of those weapons, the Mavimir is a forgeable weapon you can make at the blacksmith and it's also pretty good for Mona because that elemental mastery substat which can help when you're using Mona in a pyro setting will help her burst do a crap ton more damage and then it's passive is upon triggering elemental reaction you will actually get more elemental damage bonus which can stack up to two times. So this is a great free to play option for your Mona if you don't have something like the Wid Sith or Favonius Codex. Now lastly I'm going to talk about Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. Thrilling Tales is a really good option if you want to boost your main DPS's damage, but keep in mind your Mona's burst damage will actually drop drastically if you use this weapon. So this is for assisted situations where you just want to boost one character's damage by a crap ton. So yeah, that's basically all. I'd say the best 5 star weapon is Skyward Atlas, then the best 4 star weapons are the Wid Sith, Favonius Codex, and then the Map of Mayor, and then a little shout out to Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers if you want to boost your main DPS's damage. So yeah, that's basically all for the weapons. Now let's get into artifacts for Mona because there's a good amount of combinations you can use your Mona with that will make her do a lot of damage. And the first set I'm going to talk about is Emblem of Severed Fate. This set will actually give you the most burst damage for your Mona because the 2 piece gives energy recharge which passively gives them more hydro damage bonus. 
And then the fourth piece increases elemental burst damage by 25% of energy recharge. So this is absolutely the best damage dealing option for your Mona. If you want to see big hydro damage numbers, use this set. The next set I want to talk about is 4 piece Noblesse. This is a really good set for your Mona if you want to do an overall attack boosting buff for your entire team. I recommend you run 4 piece Noblesse if you don't already have a Noblesse person on your team. So if you already have someone like Bennett on your team and he's running 4 piece Noblesse, I advise you do not run Noblesse on your Mona and run something else like Emblem of Seven Fate. But if you are not lucky enough to get good substats for either of these sets, then there's a little budget option you can do, which is 2 piece Noblesse and 2 piece Heart of Death. Because you'll get the extra Hydro damage bonus for the 2 piece Heart of Death, and then you'll get the extra burst damage from the Noblesse. So that is also a really good budget set if you do not have good enough substats to satisfy those two four sets of 4 piece Noblesse and 4 piece Emblem of Seven Fate. So that's all for the artifact sets. For the most damage, you go Emblem of Seven Fate. To boost the overall attack of your entire team, you go for Noblesse. And then you can also do 2 piece Noblesse, 2 piece Heart of Death. For the main stats of your Mona, I recommend going Energy Recharge on the Sands, mainly because Energy Recharge gives you even more Hydro Damage bonus, and because Mona has a little bit of an Energy Recharge problem, because you have to wait for her Elemental Skill to run out to get the Particles. So you do want to get as much energy from that waiting as you can. So that's why I recommend Energy Recharge for the Sands. But you could also win Elemental Mastery if you feel like you have enough Energy Recharge. Because Elemental Mastery will boost your Elemental Burst's damage by a lot if you're using Pyro characters. So that can be really good as well. And you can also use Attack Percentage if you do feel like you have enough Energy Recharge once again. But overall, I do recommend Energy Recharge because it just gives you more Hydro Damage bonus. And it's just super helpful. It let's her get her burst more often. For the Goblet, obviously you're going to want Hydro Damage bonus for this one. And then for the Circlet, Crit Rate or Crit Damage depending on what your ratio is. And then for the substats, crit rate and crit damage. And then of course you want some more energy recharge on top of that so you can satisfy your elemental burst's needs. And then you can go for elemental mastery. And then attack and attack percentage last. So there we go, that is all for the artifact sets. Just to recap, you can run 4 piece emblem of seven fate, 4 piece noblesse, 2 piece noblesse and 2 piece heart of death. For the main stats, I recommend energy recharge, hydro damage bonus, and then crit rate, crit damage, depending on your ratio. And then for the substats, you want crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, elemental mastery, and then attack and attack percentage on the sidelines. So yeah, that's it for the artifacts. Now let's get into the team building for Mona. There's a lot of great teams you can run Mona with. And honestly, you can just pair up in a lot of teams. So I'm going to be going over specific teams and specific people that Mona works really well with. For the first team, look, you've seen it everywhere. I've seen it anywhere. We already know that the Morgana team is the best team you can actually run your Mona with. Pretend this Rosalia is Ganyu or Ayaka because I do not have any of those so you guys gotta deal with it. But anyway, this team is extremely good at freezing people forever and ever and then Mona is really good at boosting your team's overall damage and increasing the damage the opponents take from your, all your attacks. This really is amazing. This amazing team. <laughs> Other great teams to run with Mona is someone that's a pyro damage dealer, kind of like Deluc. So you can switch out this Deluc for maybe a main DPS Yard Fei, Yoimiya, Hu Tao, you know, all the other pyro damage dealers. And she will just do amazing with those teams. So yeah, that's basically all for the highlights of the team building. Once again, you can put Mona in so many other team comps that's really good because it will just increase your overall damage and you'll see a big Hydro numbers on your screen which everybody likes, obviously. You can put it in Electro Charge teams, like for example if you want to do Raiden Shogun and then you want to do a little Jangling Mona Bennett, this is also be a good team. So yeah, that's all for the team building. Now I think it's time we do a little bit of a showcase. But before we do that showcase, I'm going to show you guys all the stats on my Mona. She has an attack of 1291 with elemental mastery of 82. She has a crit rate of 63.3% and a crit damage of 158.6%. Energy recharge of 206.3%. And then a hydro damage bonus of 87.9%. 
<laughs> I just want to preface this by saying my mod isn't really the best build, to be honest. You might not be seeing some giant numbers like other showcases, but this is the more realistic money showcase, alright? So the person we're actually going to violate today is Masanoi for instruction for Pyro. Switch to Mona, get the Witsith buff. Then we see that bubble on him. Bop! 91k right there. And then you saw that little omen that he had around his body. That means he will take a lot more damage. Well, according to my stats, 56% more damage while he had that effect on him. So yeah, as you can see, Mona can do a lot of damage and then increase all everyone's overall damage even after her burst is done and off the field. So I'm going to do a pink 91k again. Amazing. So that's going to be all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys now know what weapons, artifacts, teams... And what talent to level up on your mana. Thank you guys for so much support. I recently hit 200 subscribers and I woke up the next day I had 210 plus. You guys are actually goaded. Thank you guys so much. So yeah, that's gonna be all for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye bye.